You're not supposed to see this, so let's keep this on the down low, shall we, Rosie? Jeep accidentally posted photos of the new Wagoneer SEV, and it looks great. It reminds me, as they say here in the article, which we're going to talk about, it reminds me a lot of the uh, Range Rovers, and specifically like the, the uh, Evoque in the front end, and then the Range Rover Sport in pretty much the rest of the body. I'm going to show you this um, design from a front side and rear. We don't have any interior photos yet, but you could expect it to be very similar to the Wagoneer, the internal combustion engine that we have in production today. Before we do that though, before we jump into Photoshop, let's have a look at what we know here from this article from uh, Motor One. As always, I'm going to link it down in the description. Jeep accidentally posted photos of the new Wagoneer SEV. Just last, last week, Jeep teased the Wagoneer S, but now the electric SUV is bearing all in official images. The automaker's social media accounts, so the official social media accounts of Jeep leaked these images, but they quickly removed them, so I guess the intern was fired. This is Jeep's first US bound EV. It looks like a spitting image of the same concept from 2022, which is pictured all the way down here. It looks very similar with these almost temple-like lights in the front end. And dare we say it has a strong Range Rover Velar vibes. Yes, the Velar, that's the one I'm thinking of. Not the Range Rover Sport as much as the Velar, specifically here in the back end with this uh, it's kind of sloping roof line that we have. Jeep will see the Wagoneer as, a, as an electric only uh, vehicle with the US to get the posh zero emission SUV this fall. So it should be introduced or revealed officially any time now. The 2025 Wagoneer S will be sold with standard all-wheel drive, meaning that you're always going to have dual motors in this Jeep, which I think it should have. It is a Jeep. You don't really want to have it be front-wheel drive in a big package of a Jeep like this. You have 600 horsepower in 0 to 60 in three and a half seconds. I mean, I don't know what's going on with EVs right now, but they're just getting ex ridiculously fast when they don't necessarily need to. I don't think anyone buying this, or the majority of them, they're not going to floor it and just want to go 0 to 60 in three and a half seconds every single time uh, they go out for a drive. But if you want to, you have the ability to take your big Jeep from standstill to 16 three and a half seconds and scare everybody that's riding along with you. And we have eight EVs across five brands are scheduled to hit the market by 2026. So they're going to be busy in the EV department of Stellantis. Now this large uh, platform that this sits on has been engineered in 400 and 800 volt configurations with battery packs varying in capacity from 85 to 118 kilowatt hours. And they say sedans with this platform will deliver 500 miles of range. And I feel I've heard that a lot of times before for concept EVs. And then they come out and you realize that you will only get 75, 80% of that advertised range. So I believe that when I see it in real life. Although the Wagoneer S will be EV only, the STLA large platform is intended for both combustion engines and hybrid powertrains as well. And looking at this design, I'm not sure if, if they're going to add a, uh, a hybrid version to this, but looking at the overall proportions, it definitely feels like this could definitely house a small little engine up front, maybe even a six cylinder up here, because we do have a proper hood. We don't have the greenhouse stretching all the way to this point, like we have in a lot of, e a lot of other EVs. So let's jump into Photoshop here and quickly have a look at this design and what's going on. So I think EVs uh, these days, I think Stellantis are actually doing very good when it comes to the EV designs. They have a lot of cool designs uh, that are electric only that doesn't necessarily feel like electric vehicles when you look at the proportions. And I think this is a good example of that. So here we have the concept and down here, this silver one, these three images are the actual model and these uh, sort of darker ones are the, are the concept that was unveiled in 2022. And looking at the front end, you can see just how much narrow and sportier this is compared to the normal internal combustion wagon here. And this is where it definitely gets a lot of Range Rover vibes in this. Velar, Evoque, 
and especially when you have the Wagoneer name stamped out on top here and this looked like a temple or something with these lights these jeep slots that we have in the grill are now lit up from it looks like from above because as you can see we do have a trend of the decade here a full light bar and it looks like the headlights are actually sitting in here somewhere so we might have a couple of light bulbs sitting behind this very dark and tinted glass so no bumper headlights in in this design now looking at the normal wagon here this is a lot more stately and it feels a lot more i would say luxurious in its design very upright front end and very boxy typical big american suv proportions for this design I, I think it looks pretty good because I do like the classic layout that we have here. We have a clear separation. We have the bumper here separating the top graphics from the lower graphics. But it's still instantly recognizable, of course, as a Jeep because you have the grille and you also have this classic layout that I just talked about. Now looking at the side view here, this is where it gets inter interesting for this Jeep because this is where I think... I should have switched these out because it's easier to sketch when I have the front end on the other side. But anyway, we do have a very sharp shoulder line cutting down here, then almost continues up here in the top part. Range Rover-like front end, but we still have a clear bumper here, which I like, and also a nice little uh, lip spoiler at the bottom to properly plant the car and have that piece be the one, be the single piece that sticks out the furthest in the front end, giving it a more sporty look. But look at the uh, the wheelbase here and the and the positioning of the axles. This is usually where you can see. I've talked about this, for example, specifically. I think the best example again is the Ionic Five, where you have the the rear axle sitting very far out, creating a super short overhang in the rear and that is the detail that gives that car away as an EV but as I look when I look at this this definitely looks like a, a regular internal combustion engine car just looking at the proportions I do like the sloping roof line which seems to be a trend these days again uh, with a lot of uh, full-size SUVs you have it in the Lincoln I do believe it's the Aviator which also has more of a sloping uh, shoulder line that goes in line almost parallel like this with the uh, with the roof line but here this is more of the Range Rover style where you have the shoulder line going upwards and the roof line dipping downwards creating a very narrow area here making it feel like it's moving forward just standing still and creating this more dynamic feel now, looking at the Wagoneer here and comparing these two, they are like two completely different cars. The dynamic Wagoneer SEV looks sporty, dynamic, where the Wagoneer internal combustion engine looks super static and boxy. We do definitely have the two box design here intact in the Wagoneer. One box here, then you have this first box being the uh, engine bay and the hood and having these graphics these chrome pieces here in the windows makes it feel like they're pointing like reaching upwards because they end here we have a sharp corner up here where, where they have radiuses in the bottom making it feel like they want to point upwards making this design feel taller than what it actually is but we do have the black roof which uh, cuts away some of this mass we also have this black bumper and the black piece at the very bottom it is stately i would say stately design for the wagoneer the, uh, this is actually the grand wagoneer here now coming into the actual production version of the wagoneer ev super sporty again and have a look at this roof line how it cuts down here it actually cuts down a lot further than what we have here so if we were to have an x-ray vision it would probably look something like this almost like a coupe suv you can see that from this angle just how much this slopes down and creates this super aggressive integrated wing up top in the back very unusual for a big jeep suv to have that kind of treatment the hood design very classic lines here as well giving me more reason to think that they're actually going to put an internal combustion just plop it in here eventually now we do have a light bar in the front end we also have a light bar right here in the rear end so the trend continues in the back I like that the shoulder line connects to the corner of the taillight and then shoots all the way forward. If we were to continue this line, you can see where it goes. It goes straight into the corner of the headlight. Beautiful design, a lot of Range Rover here as well. If I were just to remove the badge here, I would probably think that this was a Range Rover concept, just looking at the volumes and the surfaces, very smooth surfaces. Comparing the rear end of the uh, EV to the uh, internal combustion engine, again, a lot more static here 
almost a vertical rear end, which is good because this is what you want in a big SUV like this. You want as much space as possible for your luggage and for your people inside of the car, obviously. And I do think they do, do a good job with that here while keeping it still pretty classy in the design. You're not going to have the same space, obviously, in this, even though this is an EV. So it might actually have more space than you think since we don't have the internal combustion up front here and the gearbox sticking in all the way back here. Now the interior, as I said, we don't have any interior pictures of the new uh, Wagoneer S uh, EV, but looking at the current Wagoneer, it feels pretty classy. Not a huge fan of the integration of this and the black gloss plastic framing that we have for this, but I don't care because we still have the physical button bar down here for everything climate control related. And this is exactly what I want to see. You have the volume knob here, start button, and some more physical buttons down here for the gearbox. So overall, it's a clean interior. But it's getting kind of tricky now to separate the brands because going into EVs, they feel like everybody's do, go, following the same kind of the guidelines when it comes to designing EVs. And I think the most interesting thing here is going to be the range. If they say that the sedans are going to get 500 miles of range, then this should probably get around 400 based on those numbers.